Pancoast tumors get their name from Dr. Henry Pancoast, who was the first radiologist to describe them. These tumors are classified as Pancoast tumors because of their location in the lung apices, rather than on the type of lung cancer they emerge from. The reason that Pancoast tumors are given special consideration is that the location allows them to interfere with nerves and blood vessels, which leads to problems that are unique from tumors in other locations. Lung tumors in general are divided into small cell and non-small cell cancers, based on the way they look under a microscope and how they behave. Generally speaking, small cell lung tumors are made up of small cells, which divide rapidly and spread quickly. And non-small cell lung cancers, which should probably just be called large cell lung cancers, have large cells that divide and spread slowly. As it turns out, the majority of Pancos tumors are non-small cell lung tumors, but a few are small cell lung tumors as well. Most of the time, the signs and symptoms of Pancos tumors result from the tumor creating local inflammation and swelling and pushing up against nearby nerves or blood vessels, which disrupts their function, and this phenomenon is known as mass effect. In some instances, there's tumor invasion, which is when tumor cells penetrate and grow directly into surrounding structures. Now, at the first thoracic nerve root, or T1, you've got some sympathetic nerves that supply the head, neck, and eyes. This point is super close to the lung apices, and so it's susceptible to compression or even invasion from a nearby Pancos tumor. Normally, these sympathetic nerves help to dilate the pupil, raise the eyelid, and help stimulate the sweat glands. If a Pancos tumor pushes on or invades these sympathetic nerves, it can cause meiosis, a small or constricted pupil, ptosis, a droopy eyelid, and anhydrosis, a failure to sweat. Together, this triad of symptoms is called Horner syndrome and happens on the same side of the face as the nerve that's affected. If the tumor cells invade or grow into the brachial plexus, which is a collection of nerves that supply the shoulder and arm, individuals can get shoulder pain and weakness. Nerve compression can also cause paresthesia, numbness, and a tingling sensation in the arms and hands. Also in that area, there's the left laryngeal nerve, as well as the right laryngeal nerve. These run up alongside the trachea to supply the muscles of the larynx, or voice box. So if these get compressed, it can cause weak or paralyzed larynx muscles, which can cause voice hoarseness. A Pancos tumor in the right lung apex can also compress a large vein called the superior vena cava, which drains blood from the head, upper chest, and arms. Even partial compression of the superior vena cava can cause the venous pressure behind the obstruction to increase. Increased venous pressure can cause a flushed appearance from the pooling of blood in the veins, as well as edema or swelling of the face and arms, from fluid leaking out of the blood vessels and into the tissues. The decrease in venous return of the blood to the heart also means that less blood's getting pumped to the lungs leaving individuals feeling short of breath. A Pancos tumor is usually diagnosed with a CT scan or a chest x-ray, which will show a tumor in the lung apex. Like any suspected lung cancer, a biopsy must be done to confirm the cell type. The treatment generally depends on the type of tumor as well as how far the tumor is spread and which structures are involved. If it's really close to an important nerve or blood vessel, then radiation or chemotherapy might be done to help shrink the tumor and make it easier to remove surgically. Alright, as a quick recap, Pancos tumors describe any lung cancer that has a mass in the apices of the lungs. From this unique location, a tumor can compress or invade nerves, causing Horner syndrome, shoulder pain, and voice changes. And it can also compress blood vessels like the superior vena cava, which can cause facial flushing. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.